All right, what's up? Welcome back to the Empire Boxing Podcast. This is episode two, and we have another one of our favorite local British Columbian talents. We have the bad boy next door, Brett Gibbons. Welcome to the podcast. What's going on, guys? Thanks How's it going? Me. Good. It's good. I'm happy to be here. It's a nice spot. Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a good Tuesday. Um, let's jump right in. How are you cool. feeling? Loose? Yeah. Uh, what the viewers can't see right now is Rhett just cracked a social vodka soda. So he's getting a little loose for this podcast. I think he's a little bit nervous. <laughs> and the sipping sounds. All right. So Rhett, let it, like, let, we want to get to know you today. Tell us a little bit about the kind of the beginning of boxing for you. What introduced you to boxing um, and what kind of set the stage for that in your life? So training, like I started kickboxing when I was like four. Mm -hmm. um, my dad got me into it with my brothers. We just grew up like sparring all the time in and out of it. Um, I did like some MMA when I was 14. And then uh, I didn't train for like four years. And then uh, I met a guy named Mike Pesic and he knows Manny Sobrell. And I came to school with like a black eye. And he was like, you know, if you think you're a tough guy, like you should go to the gym and prove it, you know? And I was like, all right, bring me to the gym and I'll prove it. And then he brought me there and then Manny liked me scrapping with his guys and stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. Like I want to join this, you know? And basically from that on, I was like boxing my ass off. Wicked. Yeah. Um, and then the kickboxing, um, did you find that you missed it? Was the transition easy? It's, it's interesting. We've had a uh, I know a couple of boxers, ex kickboxers. So, what was that like for you? Do you miss it at all, or did you just find like boxing was? You're like, this is it. I found it. Kickboxing's fun because it's like a, it's like more of like a scrap, you know. Like right. I like MMA and kickboxing because it's like a full on scrap. But uh, boxing, I like boxing because it's like you have to get really good at specific things to get good at it. Mm. You can't just be tough and then be really good at boxing, you know. And that's, uh, like, the art of it and, like, the subtleties and, like, it just felt more rewarding getting good at boxing than mm -hmm. it did for me in MMA or kickboxing. Interesting. So just curious about the MMA uh, experience. Did you have a ground game? Did you ever grapple, yeah. do some jiu-jitsu, anything like that? Yeah, I did jiu-jitsu for years. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. I did jiu-jitsu for probably, like, six years. Like, But I just... I like to box, you know? Yeah. Okay. I've cool. thought about having MMA fights too, though. Like I could, tr I think I could train for like a couple months and go and have like an MMA fight and be pretty like, you know, handle yeah. my own pretty well. Yeah. But, uh, I just don't want to jump back and forth and just kind of be like a little here, a little there. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Especially with something like getting into professional boxing and wanting to make a splash and create your career going forward. It's like, it kind of is going to just take all you have, mm -hmm. right? You have to put 110% into it. Um, very cool. So what, tell us about what gym are you currently training at? I train in New West at, uh, in -Aim Boxing. It's my buddy's gym. He's a, he's a young guy. Like he basically created it through COVID in his garage. Wicked. Right? But it's so nice. Like when he was like, oh, I got this gym in my garage. I was like, uh-huh. All right, bro. Like I'll come check it uh -huh. out. And then like uh -huh. when, we, when I went, it was like really legit. And like, you know, he, he's not like the most experienced guy like i've trained with like manny tony pep jerry virasami but mo is like really dedicated to boxing mm. and he's dedicated to like getting better trying new things he has a lot of passion for the sport so i like to work with him because there's no drama there's no gym drama too mm. right you know when you go to gyms and it's like this guy doesn't like that guy, so you can't go there. And this old guy oh, hates I know. that old guy, you know? I know. I feel like, you know, the, a lot of the a lot of the boxing, um, like, I don't know if it's local, but it does seem like there's quite a seed of turmoil that kind of exists in the community. Um, and I'm with you. It's like, if you can dodge those bullets, dodge them. Yeah. Um. So, it, interesting, like, working with a young coach, do you find, because uh, I, I think, like, you know, there's a lot of old coaches who have, you know, their legacies in, in the sport that kind of do the same things and have the same style. So do you mm -hmm. find working with a new, a younger coach is like he's he's studying more, he's innovating more, he's presenting new things to you? What's kind of the difference? Because you work with these 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 old dogs, these like mm -hmm. these legends, and then mm -hmm. you've worked with a new guy, but you're preferring that. Is that is that why he's more innovative and has a fresher look at it? I think that's definitely an aspect because you know, like older guys, they don't go on YouTube for stuff really too, right? Exactly. So like whatever they were taught, that's what they know. Yeah. They don't like learn stuff from like, like we could learn five new things right now from all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. And pra <laughs> practice and train them. But uh, 
I take like a lot of the stuff that I've learned from like Manny and Tony and Jerry, mm-hmm. and I take the stuff that Mo shows me, and we like mix it together. Mm-hmm. So like drills, like what I do, like a lot of my training is just like drilling over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's not like super fancy. Like we do like the mitt work and this and that, but like today I was at the gym and it was like I basically only threw hooks and jabs, left right. hooks and jabs at yeah. the gym for two and a half hours. Yeah, like I think like you know what what people don't understand once you get into you know the competitive side of boxing is that it's it's pattern formation, mm-hmm. pattern creation, processing rate, and then be able to have like that built into your system mm-hmm. on a on a systemic level yeah. to execute that given the, presented with a situation right mm-hmm. or to set something up it's it's not about like 38 combination you know pad work yeah. where the coach is yeah. doing more than the actual boxer yeah um and and that's the cool thing to me about the competitive side of of or training competitive boxes is like well what can i give you that's useful mm-hmm. what can i give you that you can use and that comes with repetition you know like you're saying yeah and it's not it's like it's different when you're when you're doing it and like you're really trying to get good at stuff like you're not doing that for fun you know, like it's like I, I'm not here to be entertained. I'm here to get better. Right. Oh, so yeah. it's like I'm just throwing the hook that I want to be really good at throwing mm. for like two hours. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like yeah. simple stuff over and over and over again. Yeah. And that that bridge that bridges, the, you know, the gap between, you know, entertainment and just sort of like the fitness boxing community, which has its own mm-hmm. look. Right. But yeah. once you once you cross that bridge into competitive, it is it's about. Different. Yeah, it's, it's about absolute precision mm-hmm. practice. So, I mean, while we're here, we might as well talk about the Canelo fight because I'm sure you watched it. Well, you know. May may have. Well, like, I, I watched it. I just, it just seemed like, obviously, you know, uh, Bivol, is that how you pronounce his name? Bivol, yeah. Bivol, Dimitri yeah. Bivol. The guy just, he, he just kind of, like, figured out Canelo's game plan. Yeah. And Canelo's been doing that same thing over and over again, yeah. right? Trying to walk guys down, high guard throwing hard shots and not like putting huge combos together mm. and the guy was just countering his one hard shot with multiple combos yeah. over and over again yeah i think like canelo made three three mistakes i think first mistake um he didn't adjust mm-hmm. at he all. didn't make an adjustment at yeah. all uh two um he yeah he underestimated bivol probably training exactly for his style mm-hmm. you know so you have to make an adjustment if you see that someone's done that and the third is he went vegan oh did he really he went vegan did he really? He did. Why what? would you Thank why you. would you change shit up like that? Thank like, you. I mean, first off, if anyone's a vegan out there and I'm, you're offended right now, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm not really, but they're 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 gonna be. It's Vancouver. It's, yeah, we just lost I mean, like however many followers right now. I mean, like, get your carne, bud. Yeah. Like you've been doing this your entire <laughs> professional career, and then yeah. you go up and ch- you go up and wait. Yeah. First off, you go up and wait, say that back to yourself. You go vegan. Mm-hmm. So what is he eating? Riso. I don't, know. I don't know. Tons of rice? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. I think that was a mistake. I mean, he, it's clear the man needs some carne asada in his life after that fight. Hundred percent. And he needs some he needs to use his footwork, you know? I mean Jeez, he had man. he he was punching singles. Like it was like a single shot. And he had this weird left or this this rear uh, rear hook he was trying to do that just kept hitting Bival's shoulder. Mm-hmm. Like not really a significant punch at all that he did over and over and over. And I was like, what is Eddie Reynoso saying to him right now? What is this corner saying to He him? just kept kind of, he got countered off that a bunch of times. Yeah. Every time. I know. The guy would just block it, boom, 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 throw like four shots I right know. after. And then gets frustrated and almost suplexes him. Je- like Jenna, the, the do, you have a, round. do you have one of the trainer's impressions for us? The trainer's impressions? Eddie, <laughs> I've already offended all the vegans. I'm not about to <laughs> offend my Latino brothers and sisters out there now. Dan just gave me the evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rhett, let's let's bring it back to you. Do you come from uh, a family of athletes, scholars, musicians? What do you come from? Uh, uh, my brothers are, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Is that just because they're trying to keep up with you, scrapping? No, I was trying to keep up with them. All right, so yeah. are you... Because I'm the youngest. Yeah. Okay. So that's what made me the toughest. I think brothers forge yeah. tough. 100%. Tough, tough kids. That's what I yeah. missed. I'm just a wimp. My, uh, my oldest brother was like a tiger bomb... Muay Thai champion. Wow. And then my middle brother was a Kyokushin karate champion. Wow. So we all fight. And the fights. I thought you were going to say Tiger Bomb model. <laughs> I have, oh, man. I think everyone in this room has a good story about Tiger Bomb. No? Yeah. Quick eye contact if you do. All right. Um, so, okay. So, like a family of, of combat champions. And, in, and is anyone else into boxing or just you? Uh, 
Yeah, they're they're into it, but they just didn't really like get into it like right. I did. Yeah. My dad is a huge boxing fan, and his dad was a boxer in the army. And wow, so very cool. Yeah, that's kind of. I just I like boxing, you know. Like yeah, it was, it was like just. I remember my oldest brother showed me like Floyd Mayweather when I was young. Yeah, and he showed me like him doing that shoulder roll. That's I was just- like. How is he doing that? Yeah. Like, what is going on? Yeah. And he was fighting Philip in Do or in Doe. And uh, then Floyd, like, knocked him out. And I just was, like, obsessed with, like, throwing the gloves on and try to shoulder roll. I got punched out so many times trying to do it. You mm. know? Yeah, then, that, uh, that's a hard style to, to learn. But once you yeah. have it, it's so elusive. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And anything else you were into as a kid that sort of um, either did or didn't, you know, improve your boxing or influence it? Um, I don't know. Like, I played a lot of sports. I, I like, obviously, you know, like, the typical young kid. Like, I used to get in a lot of fights growing mm, up. Mm-hmm. A ton of fights. So. But since I started boxing, I, like, I never really got into that many street fights. Which okay. is weird. Because I think the sparring and stuff, like, gets it out of you. Yeah. You know? Channels it a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, and then... Was there a particular person that, that kind of, like, you know, you felt that visceral click with boxing? Was there a particular person that also kind of, you know, gave way to that and in- inspired you or influenced you to c- to continue on to be like a, you know, professional boxer that you are now? Uh, probably my dad. Okay. Yeah, he's just in my. He was always in my ear about it. Like you know. Yeah, like he was he was going through a hard time in his life at one point, and I was like visiting him in a a center that he was in, mm-hmm. and um, he was like, you know, like I think you should you should really like take the the fighting seriously you know like i see you training and doing this like you could really go somewhere with it you know and like make something out of your life with fighting instead of like screwing around on the streets all the time or doing this or that with your friends and Mm -hmm. so like i kind of like i would i used to bring him to the gym with me all the time because it was like the only way me and him would connect Mm -hmm. because i don't i don't really know him that well outside of that for a long time, I didn't know him that well outside of that. So uh, it was like that's kind of how I built my relationship with him was like going to the gym with him. And, you know, he'd get in arguments with like Manny and stuff like that and like whatever. Yeah. So I had to stop bringing him. But. Was, when your dad said that to you, was that one of the first times that you ever thought, man, maybe he's right. Maybe I could do something with this. Or had you always had that seed in your mind? I always wanted to be like a champion fighter. I've always thought that was like the coolest thing in the world, you know, like the money, the cars, like, having the title of being a champion. Like, I don't even give a shit about wanting to be rich. Mm -hmm. It's like, but when when you see all the stuff that comes with being, like, a champion boxer, it's different, you know? It's not not even like the MMA guys. Like, those MMA guys don't have the same aura as, like, a Floyd Mayweather, a Canelo, like, And what do you think that's due to? Do you think that's kind of the the history and the culture wrapped up in in boxing from those Muhammad Ali era, you know, the Sugar Ray Leonard era? Like, do you think that... Yeah, like, it's definitely the history, but it's also, like, I think, you know... I think that Dana White has, like, a really close grip on a lot of those guys, so they Mm. don't have the space to grow as individuals that well. Interesting. So they don't have, like, that same aura, you know? There's one guy who had it, and we could all name him right now. Yeah, for sure. I think... um. I think maybe Patty, Patty the Batty might be the next maybe. guy that's going to come up with some interesting personality, spice yeah. up spice up everything. Yeah, he does, but he's never, I don't know if he'll reach that, like, super stardom level, yeah. like, like a lot of boxers do, and only one MMA fighter really ever did, McGregor, true. right? Yeah, I mean, w- yeah, true, and then, and then you have, like, the, you know, the, the Nate Diaz story that kind of run parallel to that. But I mm-hmm. think, yeah, I think Conor McGregor kind of became, I think, I think a, a, a non UFC fan, non UFC watching person could still name and know who Conor yeah, McGregor would exactly. be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hardest lesson that you've had in life as an athlete? Did you have any like real hard knocks that made you question everything? Um, yeah. Like you gotta, like, uh, it's sacrifice, honestly. That was the hardest thing for me because getting in, like when I started taking boxing serious, I was 18, right? So to a lot of people, that's that's older to start taking boxing serious. And I've already have built up like groups of friends and bad habits and like non-athletic lifestyle stuff, right? Mm. So getting out of that was like tough for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just like it takes a lot of uh, discipline and self-control and stuff like that to like be successful and 
in sports. Right? What was the hardest part about getting out of that? Was it the discipline to say no to certain people in your life? Or was it the shift into a training mindset versus like a like a party mindset or whatever it was? No, the training mindset was like has always been a part of me. Like mm. I always get like really into stuff that I, I like and like I go overboard with it. Mm. But then I'm like I burn the end. At, I burn the candle at both ends. Right? right. Like I do. I like work hard and then I party hard. Right. So right. that was like a problem for Which me. Which is for like while. kind of fits the profile of a, of a champion athlete. I mean, maybe I maybe not just in boxing. I don't know. The NBA is like I mean, that is the NBA. Am I wrong? Best maybe. guys go home. <laughs> What's that? So the best guys go home at night to their family, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Except th- on the road. I think you short. Right. I think, yeah, I think you shorten your career. You know, yeah. ultimately, when you when you're burning the candle at both ends, be it partying, be it even training too hard, mm-hmm. um, not providing yourself recovery, like injury, you know, ensues that kind of thing. Have you ever had any any injuries or anything that took you out that just challenged you? Oh yeah, like I've I, like because I just would go way too hard, like you just said. Like I didn't understand like the like. Tra- training every day you can't train every day mm-hmm. as hard as you can and i used to do that and i'd mm-hmm. get burnt out and i'd just like be getting my ass whooped at the gym by guys that i'm like training way harder than yeah it comes and down to like, like your maximum recoverable volume what is the maximum volume mm-hmm. that your body can handle to recover and perform and like how you're feeling that day you know like mm-hmm. if you're like if you're like exhausted that day and you're like, I'm just going to go as hard as I can today, like tomorrow you're going to be even worse and then worse yeah. and then worse. Absolutely. Right? There's a lag effect with that. And then, I mean, also if you're, if you're mentally, you know, burned out, the processing rate required in boxing is so high. You're mm-hmm. going to get caught with something that you wouldn't normally get caught with. Yeah. You know, I was there. I had that exact moment this week. Interesting. Um, if you weren't boxing, imagine. I know it runs. You're like, I can't imagine. But imagine for a second if you weren't boxing, what would you be doing? MMA. <laughs> okay, so what belt are you in jiu-jitsu? Um, I just did like no gi jiu-jitsu. No gi? I don't have any belts or okay, anything cool, like that. Cool. Yeah. Favorite choke or submission? Uh, the best submission is a rear naked choke because it's like Classic. you can't. Once that's in, you can't get it out. Once you're on someone like a backpack. Yeah, but it's but like one of the best ones you can catch people with when um they don't really know grappling is like mm-hmm. a triangle choke, you know, because mm-hmm. like they get you on the ground and you're setting it up like immediately. And yeah, as soon as you off balance them, you get in the arm. Yeah. Love it. We yeah. digress. Hey, the guys wanted to know a little bit about your stance, left hand orthodox. Um, no, uh, uh, I'm, I'm like ambidextrous with a lot of things. Like I used to skateboard and snowboard and I would, uh, I would skateboard and snowboard like goofy, you know, mm. so right foot forward. So I have better balance actually in boxing southpaw, but my right hand is my dominant hand. So I switch back and forth a lot. Yeah. We, um, well, I, maybe I'm, I'm speaking personally. I think, you know, Rep was on our, our last card uh, that we did that pay-per-view event, um, the resurgence. And, uh, I have so many questions for you about this, but Mm -hmm. I have to say I had not really experienced you as a fighter. I had not really seen you perform, and I Mm -hmm. was blown away. Um, You're a technician. You're very technical. Um, It was a a flawless performance. Um, What was that like fighting a homie, though, also? (laughs) Uh, He's not my homie. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so. so contrary to popular belief, I thought you guys were mates at the time. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he was talking some shit, so I was like, you know what, man? Like, we have mutual friends, but, like, right, I'm really okay. going to try to hurt you now, you know? like Okay. Spicy. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, interesting. So mutual friends, no but you bad guys blood weren't connected. No but, you know. All right, cool. No, I, I just don't respect that talking shit, like, a little bit, because, like, it's like, bro, we're part of the same circle, you know? Like, let's go fight and put on a good fight instead of, like... I don't know. So do you yeah. find um does does that does that shit talk does it it no. gets to you a little bit no, or are you no. just like just no, I'll show him. you in the ring? No, that that was just from him it pissed me off cuz I was like, you know, like I we we've seen each other around and like it's been chill and mm-hmm. you know, like I don't know, like I think he said some stuff that it just I was like, oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, like we've never boxed before, so you don't know what I'm like as a fighter, right? And I knew his game plan. Like, I, I, obviously, when you look at someone's body, you can kind of tell what they're going to try to do. Anatomically, to my body. certain yeah. things work. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew he's going to come in with body shots and overhand rights, and he's going to probably be ducking behind his jab. So uh, my, my game plan was to do basically exactly what I did. Like, I was going to stop him from putting me on the ropes on the, uh, on, around the border, 
catch him and I was going to try to punch with him because mm. I know he punches like this. Mm. So when he, he, I had his head right here and I hit him with a hook, a right hook, and I noticed it like wobbled him a little bit. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I got him. And he opened up. So as soon as he opened up, I opened up with him and I was just going to throw like 10 shots, but I threw two and he went down and I was like, got him. I yeah. knew I was going to get him with that. Yeah. And I think jog my memory. There were two knockdowns, three knockdowns, two knockdowns, two yeah. knockdowns. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a hell of a fight. I but was, he's super tough. I mean, Ari, yeah, Ari, Ari Shari, for those who didn't see the fight, you can definitely go to our website and pull up that, that whole event was just, man, like, mm -hmm. I was on I was on the the ringside getting social and I was just I could barely I could barely catch the moments there were so many of them. Yeah, it was uh, such a good show. Oh, like, it was unreal. Yeah. So if you if you haven't watched Rhett's fight, please go back uh, and check that out through our website. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, amazing work. You were a technician. It was it was like sometimes you watch certain people. And I'm like, this is what boxing is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. This is what <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, so it was a pleasure Thank to you. watch you fight. Um, how are you preparing for the next one? Um, I don't really know much about my opponent yet, really. But um, don't look at Dan. <laughs> he he's not gonna tell you. <laughs> well, uh, do you guys know anything about him? Hey, or? listen, you just answer the questions I just ask him. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm 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 I I'm gonna try to knock him out. You know, right. that's basically what I'm gonna do. Like, right. when I see him, like it's like the amateur days too, right? Like you see the guy the day before the fight sometimes, or the day of the fight. Mm. So it's like. You kind of know what's what's coming. Just downloading your way. a little bit of information. Yeah, yeah. So t talk to me about. Okay, so let's let's make it more specific. Um, so you're gonna knock him out. Cool. I can't wait. I'll be right there. I'll be going for I'll it. I'll be right there. Yeah. Um, what what is your SNC like? What is your training up until you know, let's say you know, six weeks out, four weeks out? What does that look mm -hmm. like for you? Um, so like further away from the fight i'm doing a lot of more like long distance endurance type of stuff mm. and uh as it gets closer it's more like sprints with like even my workouts like punching sprints running sprints push-up sprints like everything i can do to be explosive mm -hmm. um and like you know that would have been a good question for mo too because <laughs> he sets it all up right yeah maybe like, we'll have to get him in here and ask him yeah. i'm always curious what you know people's snc you know programs are I, i've had my own you know, experiences with uh, different coaches, you know, mm -hmm. my own work. And then um, anecdote, my one of my friends was actually uh, Dimitri Bival's SNC coach. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the, the tatted up guy with the beard who was in his corner. So, and I've watched, you know, Taylor work and um, and I was, you know, when it's done right, like Bival looked fresh by the 12th round. When yeah, it's I don't get that. I don't know how people are doing that. Right. Like someone introduce me to someone who's doing that because I want to know. Well, it's, it's all phases, right? So it's like the phase of, you know, like way, way before the fight, you're working on building your strength, mm -hmm. you know, and then, yeah, you're working on building your, your aerobic base and then your speed strength. Kind of basically what you're saying, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, when it's done right, like you can see when an athlete truly is at their peak and the conditioning yeah. is perfect, it's I'm crazy. always like, you know, props to the S&C coach mm -hmm. who pulled that off, right? Yeah. Um, just, just for those out there, S&C is strength and conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Translate for yeah. any of our non-boxing fans. Yeah, strength and conditioning. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. You're right. Um, so okay, cool. So right now you're working on building that aerobic base, and then speed yeah. strength done before the fight's perfect. Yeah, and I just drilling like over and over again, like I said, because it's like there, like obviously, like if you get hit with a good shot, your body will just take over for you for a minute, mm -hmm. and like you need to know your footwork, like your your body can just like fight for you until mm -hmm. you can start thinking again, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, and sparring. I like if I could, I'd spar every day. Really? You know, I would spar every day. And this is this is the root of the problem here because we know that that's not possible, right? Yeah. So that's good. I'm glad you have people to rein you in because I think that. Well, I don't know. There's there's different schools of thought on it. Like you got a guy like Lomachenko who rarely spars. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think it's not good. Right. I think for longevity, it's not good to spar yeah. every day, and like you get into sparring wars, and like you know, yeah, it's like, and anything can happen. And next thing you know, the your next your next actual opportunity that is part of your career is in jeopardy because you did something stupid or something stupid happened in the gym. Yeah, I think like in general rule of thumb, like always training at about seventy percent so mm -hmm. that you have those those peak moments that you can access. Is yeah, yeah, is and good. once in a while, like a hundred, but yeah, exactly. Like always, like around seventy percent is the best thing. You so you can train every day. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so it seems like you have a really great relationship with your current coach. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good buddy of mine. Yeah. Perfect. And mm -hmm. are you planning on like continuing to 
um, evolve that relationship through your your professional career? Do you have other coaches that you work with? Other Mo, if you're listening to this, this is the last fight with us, buddy. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, whole purpose of this my... podcast yeah, is for yeah, your yeah. like this your breakup it. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. No, uh, he'll be like he has no ego with learning right mm. and like he understands that me and him are both like pretty young in the game i've been around it a little longer than him actually um so when me and him when like if we if we had let's say tony come into our camp to help us out with our next fight or like i had cajun johnson in our camp helping us out with our last fight he has no problem being like yeah like show us what you got like mm. give us the knowledge and like he's a team player right yeah. so as long as I'm boxing, Mo's going to be in my corner. Wicked. Yeah. I love it. I think there's there's so much room for, you know, um, different styles, different influences, different mm-hmm. collaborations, different knowledge. Like, have you, have you thought about going down to the States ever and training? Have you yeah, done I'm gonna a little go down tour to, in? I'm going to go down to Vegas in June. Oh, cool. And where yeah. are you going to train in Vegas? Well, we were we were talking a little bit with, like, James Tony's son. Okay. So maybe we can go link up with James Tony for a little bit. And yeah, what month are you on? June. Oh, June. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, I thought you said July and I was like, well, it's going to be hot. I remember walking into a boxing club in August in Vegas and nearly he lost June's 10 pounds hot, just walking right? in the front door. June yeah, will be hot. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so what does it mean to you to kind of lead the next generation of, you know, BC professional boxers? And like, you have a statement you want to make, mm-hmm. a stand you want to take. Yeah, I think it's important. It's really important to me, actually, because I feel like there hasn't been anyone who made any noise in this city for a long time. Like the last people were like Manny and Tony and Dale. And, the door is wide open. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like we have a lot of good fighters out here. So I don't know. Like I think more guys should turn pro and, and be fighting like Robert Cousins. I think he should turn pro and fight, you know, but. There seems to be a big attraction to the amateur path, you know, I don't specifically get it. in BC. Yeah, I don't get it. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. And is there, so it, so through your through your career and, you know, the being sort of that example that it's possible and that people should go for it, you know, what, mm-hmm. what message do you have to, to young athletes that are looking at you going, what, trying to decide, am I going to go amateur? Am I going to go pro? Get your, get your amateur fights in and then turn pro like 20, 21. You know, even younger. If if you've been fighting for a while, like you should turn pro soon and get set up with Empire Boxing. Hey, wow. <laughs> and they'll organic like that. And you know, you guys can help people with their careers and get the get it going over here, you know? Like yeah. we need it. So I think Canada in general needs it. Yeah. No one res- just... no one like has respect for us right now. Even like Toronto, I think, doesn't have a lot of respect for BC boxers. So we gotta knock some of those boys out. Nice. So you're going to lead the charge then. Exciting. I love this. Um, Okay, so fantasy matchup. You're the matchmaker. You are Eddie Hearn. What's your fantasy matchup? Weight class doesn't matter. Go. I I would want to see see, um, Floyd Mayweather fight uh, Roberto Duran. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because Duran always talks about how he could figure him out, which I don't think he could, but I'd like to see that fight. Tell me you've seen the doco Four Kings. The what? The documentary, documentary Four Kings. Tell oh, me no, I it. haven't. Oh, man. Okay, so it's it's sort of like the the, the story, let's say, of um, Marvin Hagler, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns, and Roberto, Roberto, Duran. Roberto Duran, and sort of how they weave in through history and their mm-hmm. different fights together. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, and I'm not sure I'm not sure how, like, where, I think you could probably download it, mm-hmm. but if, yeah, must watch, must yeah. watch. It's because some of the interviews with Roberto Duran are hilarious yeah like, the guy was such a, a character, character. Yeah. more people like that please yeah. um okay fantasy matchup you get to fight a current boxer who's it gonna be i'd like to fight jake paul <laughs> preach preach i think everyone would boxer, like, right? i think everyone would like you to euthanize him um yeah. okay no like, like let's let's pretend a real boxer a real boxer uh, just from my own soul here like, I don't know. Like, I would like to fight, like, a big name, like, a top champion, like, anywhere between. I would like to fight one of the Charlo brothers. Okay. Yeah, at 154, I would, I'd like to fight, like, Jamel Charlo. And what would be, what would be, uh, like, three things in your game plan to fight? I would, I would, like, I would fight him the way he fights. Because he, he comes in in the middle and he, he, like, throws crazy hooks and stuff. I think, like, when you back someone up who fights like that, they have a hard time with it. 
But if you if you like job and move and job and move, they're so used to chasing those guys down. Mm, so you get you know? them on the back foot a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I would be trying to do. You cool. Know? All right. And then fantasy matchup, you versus a boxer from the past. Um, like how far in the past? Just retired? You, I mean, the, the world is your oyster. Okay, yeah. I'd fight. I'd like to fight James Tony just because I okay. I like him. I respect him. Like I'd like to share the ring with him. You know. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Uh, what do you currently have on your playlist rotation right now for for training music? I listen to a lot of Latino music when I train. No boxeo, no vida. Yeah. Excellent. They, say, say they make a movie about you one day. Which actor plays you? Honestly, like, I think Leonardo DiCaprio is the best actor. Wow, out he there, just man. goes straight for the jugular, <laughs> hey? I think Leo. He's the best. He's the best, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, he's just the best. Like, I just watched, like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like, the guy's so yeah. good. It's so good. Yeah. Wow. Killer. Um, and then, what uh, do you like to walk out to? I've only seen you walk out one time. Like, do you have the same song? You switch, switch it up? What are you going to do to no, it? No, I don't even remember the last song that I walked out to. Wow, really yeah. impactful so, song then. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was in the zone, you know? Like, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, this fight got canceled. You guys are up. I'm like, oh, shit. Put the gloves yeah. on. Let's go. Yeah. I wasn't even sweating or Put anything. Put on the Bottega Beats. Get them out there. Yeah. Everyone's like, who's this white guy coming out to? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Okay, cool. Um, And then uh, apart from me, of course, what uh, athletes do you look up to? <laughs> I had to. You did. You uh, went we, there. We hey? warmed up with it. I had to. <laughs> Uh, you can't athletes? see me, just yeah. in case you didn't get that. All right, okay. yeah, I All figured. Right. All right. Damn, I guess I'm out. I'm out of ideas now. <laughs> My boy. Yeah. No, actually, though, what, uh, what what athletes are like your favorite that you that you look up to and inspire you? Could be any sport too. Yeah. You know, like I I love Mamba mentality. Mm. Yeah. I'm all about that Kobe mentality. You know, like Damn. whenever I feel like I'm getting off track, like. I just watched some of his videos about, like, how he puts people in their place and, you know, like, he's so militant about it. And, like, he's, like, people are, like, you know, this guy was, like, shooting at the gym at, like, 4 a.m., you know, and then he'd practice and then he'd go practice again. Then he'd go practice again. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, him, Ray Lewis, you know, the football player, He he's really inspiring. Tell the us about Ray. He's just so intense. Like, have you guys ever heard him talk about, like, football? Uh, he, no. Really? Yeah, love, he, love he just, the sport. Yeah, he, he's just, like, he's about to cry, and he's, like, screaming, like, you know, he's, like, one of those motivational video guys, right. you know? Like, he's, like, the perfect person for that. Him, Wait Kobe, him. you know? And, like, obviously Floyd. Like, that guy just talks himself into being tough yeah. all the time, mm. right? So, those three. This It sounds like, you know, as you're talking, I'm kind of learning more about you. It sounds like this idea of of toughness not just physically but mentally tough seems to be something that that you possess and that you strive to train in yourself um what are your weaknesses then what are the things that i can't talk about that nah. <laughs> what are the things that you're like no oh, you know man i really like i can be my own worst enemy sometimes or um you know, I really let this type of person get to me or, you know, what, what are the things that that challenge you and challenge that mental toughness and that physical prowess that you that you're proud of about yourself? Like I said, like, you know, the discipline with, I don't know, like going out sometimes too much. And How old stuff, are you? You know, I'm 27. Can well, I'm 26. Your, I'll be 27. Live soon. your life, son. But no, I yeah, hear you. Okay? But you got to be like, if you want to be beating guys that are just like the best, like, I can't be like, oh, you know, like just out all the time or, you know. Okay, favorite, um, top three favorite movies. One of them has to be a boxing movie. So top favorite boxing movie, and then you can fill in the blanks with some Leo DiCaprio movies. No, Fight Club would, would be number one for me. Okay. It's like my favorite movie. Right. Fight Club. Um, training Day. Nice. And um, so number three is a boxing movie. Yeah, has to be. You know what? Like, I, obviously those Rocky movies are really good, but mm. I liked Southpaw. Did you? Yeah, you didn't like it? I know. Did I give it away that fast? Yeah, I liked it. I think Jake Gyllenhaal's good, man. Okay, so... <laughs> Her second favorite movie is Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, oh, okay. 
<laughs> and no, you know, it's <laughs> here's the problem well, that I have with it. Yeah, it's a good movie. Break, break it down, oh. for, break it down for us, Jenna. What's I know the, it's a little cheesy, but Guys, every okay, boxing movie. We're gonna move into great. movie reviews for great. a second. Every boxing movie. Great. Is. He said cheese. So okay, Jake Gyllenhaal, big fan, no problems there. I actually thought you were gonna pick him for your actor. I was like, what that Jakey boy? So not Jakey, but anyway, so I dig him. Great. Mm. The the boxing choreography in the opening scenes was so bad that I just couldn't sit through it. I couldn't. I I couldn't do it. Okay. Like, so, I couldn't. I have a question for you then. Tell wow. me a boxing movie that has good boxing choreography. I thought, I, okay, can I say MMA? I mean, no. It has to be boxing. That's what you said. I think, I honestly think Creed had a little bit better boxing choreography. Really? Yeah, I do. I just, I mean, it was so, it was so left field. Like, I just was like, did they not, like, ask anybody first? Like, hey, guys, we're going to make this movie about boxing. And everyone was like, okay, let's not ask people to box. Like, it was so bad. Gabriel Rosado was in that movie. And I, I it shocks me. Mm-hmm. That, like, I, th- I think it's, I think it's just like, if there's no space where I can exist that, like, boxing... It has to be real, maybe, in movies for it to even look remotely Creed was good. way more cheesy. No like, way. way. I thought worse. South... I made five minutes through Southpaw. Creed 2 was pretty cheesy. Was, that's, okay. like, the worst are boxing talking, movie ever. But are we talking boxing choreography as, the, the, the like, the bone of contention of cheese? Or are we talking the actual script and acting? I'm not talking anything about the quality of the film here. I'm talking purely boxing choreography. Okay. They all suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're all bad. They're all bad. They are. They are all bad. Rocky's on the ropes getting punched for 45 minutes. I'm like, dude, is this guy still alive? Every movie? What about Will Smith in uh, the Muhammad yeah. Ali one? Uh, Couldn't do it, you know? So It's so good. Actually, you know what I watched the other day? It had, what was the one with Denzel? Denzel played. Um, Hurricane. Hurricane. That wasn't that bad. Yeah. Oh, the you know what was a good one, actually? Scenes. Cinderella. Cinderella Man. Isn't that it? Oh, yeah, yeah with, uh, what's his face? Yeah. Crow, Russell Crow. Crow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, so Hurricane wasn't bad, and neither right. was Cinderella Mons. Okay, so they are out there. There's, There's two. Hard to choreograph a boxing movie. You're not, you don't want to punch each other. Well, maybe that's you know I mean? just like where everyone's going wrong. Yeah. But, you know, like, take one for the team. Yeah, bring in the stuntman, right? Bring in the stuntman. Yeah. For sure. I want to sit in my seat, eat my popcorn, and be like, oh, yeah, yeah. like, I'm watching. Oh, yeah, that guy's got CTE. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. That's, that's what shirt. he got. Yeah. O- this only Tom Cruise. brain damage from that. <laughs> only Tom Cruise would do his own stunts in boxing. I yeah. mean, bring it. Yeah. Let's go, Tommy T. Like, yeah. let's go. Tommy the, T or Tommy T? Tommy T. Tommy the Titan. You see that guy run? He's like T-1000. Him and, him and uh, what was the tall guy? Yeah. Uh, I love that he what? is the short guy because there was the tall guy. The tall guy's actually like 5'11. Steven Seagal, greatest terrible movie runner of all time. <sighs> that guy. Man, I've, t- I've met him. Yeah, why is he? I mean, why is he in a boxing? I've movie? unfortunately met him as well. Because yeah. he can't box or fight at all. <laughs> he he was the only. Teach you that front kick that he taught Anderson Silva? Yeah. No, but he, he when he. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. He's just like such a douchebag. You know what? You know? He was the original McDojo. He is like the walking. He's the king of McDojos. McDojo. You know, <laughs> he's the king of it. Like he's god to them. Right. He, he shows up. He's like, okay. Throw a punch right here. And then if you go to do it, he's like, no, 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 slower, slower. Yeah. And he's got his hands and he starts like slapping his body and he'll slap at you. Yeah. And then like you come at him and it's like, okay, the guy's like six foot four, maybe he's, like he's, 300 pounds. He's tick. And then he just shoots a palm right into this stunt guy's eye. And, it, and the guy's like, oh, my eye. It's like, yeah, no shit. That hurt. Like the guy's 300 pounds, but that wasn't karate or whatever. No. You no. make this guy like, okay, throw a short punch at me like this. And he just like right into his face, you know? I've heard some horror stories about him like laying out stunt people, like unsuspecting really? stunt people yeah, and like thing. flexing. And yeah. I know it's just like, I feel like, well, I mean, I feel like has Jean-Claude would have done that back in the day too. I mean, Jean-Claude Van Damme, I don't know. The man does splits on semi trucks. Like <laughs> he's I'll, a better. I want to see him and Steven Seagal fight. Steven. Fantasy um, matchup. Yeah, that's, that's my fantasy fight. matchup. Right wow. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be something. It's something. Isn't that it? would be something. I mean, maybe we all just need to go into a space where we start doing boxing movie production and we actually have fighters fighting. What Sign kind of insurance up. do we need for this? A lot. <laughs> Sign Expensive me up. That's lawyers. Why, that's why most films don't get made with real boxing. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sign you me don't up. need to be a good actor to be in a boxing movie. All those movies we just listed, prove it. Yeah. Did you see that one yeah, with Halle Berry, the new one? I heard it was good. No, but it, it wasn't MMA. 
It is. Yeah. Rhett, Rhett specifically said on his podcast that we couldn't talk about MMA movies. I was going to say Warrior. Hey, you, you su- yeah, that's such a good movie. Great movie. Yeah. And choreography is on point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like you, though. I'm, I'm not a big fan. Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. Of what? Like any boxing. Or yeah, boxing yeah, yeah. But I like Southpaw, though. And Bloodsport. <laughs> yeah. Bloodsport. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So. So the show's coming up July 16th. Are you excited to be back in the ring? Yeah, I've been waiting. I got, yeah. There was a couple times that I wanted to fight, and uh, I was sick, and it's just been a mess of a year, so can't wait to get back in there and just fight. Where Where is it at? The Grand Villa Casino, Grand right? Villa Casino, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that'll be good. So what kind of things in this year are you hoping to shake off entering the ring? What kind of, what? how much, how was your medal tested? I think everyone's medal was tested this year specific things in your life i don't know i'm just ready to fight you know just ready like, to fight. i just want to i just want to fight someone i like fighting i wish that you guys could get us eight ounce gloves to fight with but i don't think do you it's have anything legal. else you'd like to add to that wish list while we're here <laughs> you have great well, green mean, room requests yeah, like green like, yeah, so only the yeah. brown and yeah. then no brown ones yeah <laughs> all right eight ounce gloves because yeah. why because you want to fight at 54 i don't think they let you mm, okay mm-hmm. Okay. But that's it. Otherwise, just throw me in there. Wicked, we got you. And what? So describe, describe for us your absolute epitome moment of success. You are at the peak of your career. Where do you live? What do you drive? Who are you married to? Who? Who? People? Maybe plural. <laughs> Is he allowed to say you or not? No. I, I was his favorite athlete. Oh right, right. right. Oh, okay. um, what does yeah, What does your life look like? What would change for you? What would be your absolute image of success? Um, I would be 35 world champion, um, with all the money that comes with that. And yeah, uh, like I want to have a, I want to have a, like a house, probably like somewhere in Langley where I have like a big backyard, like a lot of space so I can dirt bike around and stuff like that, you know, and. Have a have a family and maybe not too big of a family by thirty five, but you know, maybe a couple of kids or something. Right on. What are you yeah. driving? Right now? Oh, Ben. In your, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> a, a, ne- a Nissan Leaf at that point or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something well, like that. What yeah. are you driving now? Car. And uh, what would yeah. it be if you were the world champion, thirty five years old, with your dream property in Langley? Wasn't expecting that, but oh. yeah, I was like, yeah. I was thinking Miami Beach or something, but no, it's all I'm good. staying here. I'm not leaving. You BC know? If boy. I rep, if I rep the city, I'm staying here. You know. Yeah, bury him. Bury him in the backyard. He ain't leaving. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, great. You're on the topic. What are you driving right now? Uh, I drive a BMW. Wow. It's not like super nice, but what year? Uh, 2012. Okay, what color? Black. Black. Just alerting X5. the police right now. Yeah. Uh, what would you drive if you're a world champion? Um, probably like you know what I really want. Have you guys ever seen <laughs> those us. cars? Have That's you guys ever seen uh, those monster? Um, it's like a truck. Like, what? What are they called? Like a. Uh, no, those Baja. You know they're sponsored by Monster. It's like these Baja. 1000 or something like that with like the little open net thing in the back and the whole yeah and they go flying (laughs) that's what i want man they're like four hundred thousand dollars i want one of those what what is it though it's just like a converted like raptor bronco something like that's what it looks like it's like it's it's something they converted yeah it's like a chevy or something that's like 400 grand with crazy suspension (laughs) (laughs) and they take them off of like roofs of like it's crazy there's a whole theme i feel like your and janice dreams are very different (laughs) yeah (laughs) I was expecting a little Danny Garcia drip over here. I was like, he's going to be in a Bugatti. He's going to have fur coat. Yeah, that. that's all. But that's all stuff <laughs> anyone would say, you know. Like, I, oh, I like yeah, yours you know, yeah, way more. Me you too. know, like it's like yeah. that's like obviously if you have a ton of money, you're going to want to buy a Lambo and this and that. But like something outside of that, I'm getting one of those. Wicked. You know? Wicked. Yeah. And then what, what's, what's your retirement job? Like, let's say, okay, you're world champion. You're 35. You're going to hang up the gloves for a bit and you have this converted Chevy with the little net thing. Are you, what are you doing? Like, hey, you doing if you saw it, you'd be into it. <laughs> no, right? I'm into yeah. it right now. Yeah. Converted Chevy with yeah. the net thing. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as I say net thing, you know, you, you can picture destroying it. destroying you know. I'm looking dream. pretty white trash right now. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, you got your tank top on, the yeah. hair is flowing in the front yeah. seat. What's your retirement Only gig? Only mustache. Yeah. yeah. Just a tash. Yeah. What's your retirement gig? 
Uh, I'd like to just, like, have my own gym that mm. I could go to. And, like, it's a big space and there's kids' classes and professional fighters. and. Wicked. And you, uh, would you like to coach at one point? Maybe later. I've tried it now and, like, I just don't like it, you know. Mm. I just don't like coaching people and, like, teaching them. I just don't like really teaching people that don't know how to box, how to box, you know. If they already know and, like, they want some tips, I'm down with that. But, like, the jab and the footwork and this and that, it's like, fuck, man, I'm good. Yeah, that's a whole nother level of sacrifice, isn't it? It's like, yeah. but I think, like, you know, for you to do what you want to do now, you've got to, you've got to live that dream fully. Like, you you have to be mm-hmm. the center of that. Like, you, you can't reserve extra energy to be teaching people how to get into their stance and keep their elbows in. Like, that's just not part of the pro path trajectory. No, I can't do it. You know, it's too, it's too boring. I don't think I'll ever really want to, unless it was like my son, like mm. I'd coach him from the ground up or like a nephew or a niece or a good friend's what kind of kid. what kind of dad coach would you be? Would you be a hard ass or would yeah. you be yeah super hard ass? Yeah? yeah, like strike fear in the hearts of six year olds. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Excellent. Yeah. Do you like? Do you like footwork for an hour? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you enter the gym first. The kids like eighteen steps behind. The other kids are like, sir, yes, sir. Everyone, yeah. Everyone, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Rat the hard ass, Gibbons. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Right. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah. You too. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having. Uh, thank. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us in this episode. We cannot wait to watch you fight. I cannot wait to watch you fight again. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all really looking forward to getting back to with, like, a live audience. Yeah, that's going to be the most exciting part. Is that make you nervous at all? No, I like that. I, that, like, that's what's, like, the only thing that I didn't like about the last show. There was no one to watch. You right. know, like I love, the, I feed off of the crowd. The more, the better. I like it. Wicked. Okay, yeah. well, we plan to stack the house and it's going to be a good time. So nice. uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you follow Rhett's journey and, and Empower Boxing towards this next fight, July 16th. Thanks for coming to the show. It was super fun. It was yeah. nice getting to chat with you, Thanks get to know me. you a bit more. And uh, that was episode two of the Empire Boxing Podcast. Yeah.